The whale trail started with 16 sites in Washington and now runs up the West Coast, all hot spots for whale watching without being on a boat. Over time, it's become much more important to have this alternative. There were studies that came out last year that showed the orcas lose five and a half hours of foraging time every day because of noise and disturbance from the whale watch industry specifically and from commercial vessels. Donna Sandstrom created the whale trail to give people a quieter option for whale watching. She's also on the governor's task force to save the southern resident killer whales and voted with most other members to ban vessel based whale watching of the dwindling orcas. Just a zone of clearance around the whales that gives them the best chance to talk to each other and to find their food. But will a ban on boat based whale watching make a big difference for the whales who are running out of salmon, their main food source? We need to get busy with with salmon recovery. We've got eight dams on the Columbia River that are, are blocking salmon recovery and we need to address that. If, if we think that we're going to recover southern residents without getting serious about salmon recovery, it's not going to happen and the clock is absolutely ticking. Jeff Friedman is the president of the Pacific Whale Watch Association. He says the boats rarely see the southern residents anymore, less than 15 percent of their tours. Currently those guidelines call for us to slow down to seven knots or less when we're within a kilometer of, of whales and this was validated by NOAA's uh, DTAC science where they measured the sound reaching uh, killer whales and what that study found was that the primary driver of the sound that reaches whales is the speed of vessels. For supporters of the ban, every little bit needs consideration and whale watching is one of them. We're not talking about a little blip in their population. We're talking about extinction. We're talking about them never coming back. So this all does first have to be approved by Governor Inslee. And guys, there's also another recommendation of possibly doing some kind of limited permit entry system so that uh, if you don't say ban it outright altogether, that you would reduce the number of boats out there. And the proponents of this ban say, hey, if we ban it outright right now, that gives us time to sort of sift through how we would do this limited permit process. Would it really solve the problem? Because besides these little whale watching boats, there are huge tankers and all kinds of ships in Puget Sound. Right. And I saw one of those today when I was shooting this interview, actually. And that is one of the main arguments against this ban, because what they say is that the speed of the boats is what makes them so loud. So mm. if the whale watching boats are sort of idling or quiet, then are they causing that much of a problem when you have these regular fleets coming through? The proponents of the ban say, hey, we're working with the big fleets and they're going to slow down as well. So it's a both and not an either or. And isn't the larger issue a lack of salmon? It is. Okay. And so what does this do ultimately to bring back salmon? Nothing, right? It just gives them the ability to find the very few salmon that are there. But again, that brings us back to arguments against the ban. And I would say the loudest contingency of people who are really riled up about this, including Ken Balcom, who is often called the grandfather of the Southern Resident Killer Whales, is that this takes zero aggressive action to restore salmon habitat. Now, there are certain parts of these recommendations that do deal with salmon. But is this something that's going to bring back salmon? It's just going to help them find what's left. All right. Allison, thank you.